You're listening to Power Talks with Beth Ann and Melody Cedarstrom in the morning where talk is real, truth is in the talk, and there is power in truth and power talks. Welcome to Power Talks. I'm Beth Ann, and say good morning to Melody as we uh, empower you with truth. But today, Melody, is, is what do we call it? <laughs> Open, Open mic. mic. <laughs> Open mic Friday. <laughs> Today is Open Mic Friday, 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. So, are you there? Yes, I am. It's Open Mic. <laughs> it's Open Mic. Well, it's I'm not going to call that back. <laughs> it's Open Mic. <laughs> it is Open Mic. But, um, uh, good morning. Good morning. And it's Friday. It's, it's uh, November 10th. Tomorrow is Veterans Day. Uh, but today, I think you have is the Marine Corps. It is the Marine Corps birthday. I'm not allowed to forget that because my brother is a Marine, served in Vietnam, and I'm not allowed to forget that. <laughs> so, it is Marine Corps birthday today. So, happy birthday to all the Marines that are listening out there. I was and a watch- big thank you to all our veterans. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I was watching Fox News this morning. They had a really moving. Um, Story and there's this group that is flying veterans into D.C. to um, Vietnam veterans to see yes. to see mm-hmm. the wall. Yes, my and, brother got to go on the honor flight. Oh, is that right? They're the honor flight. He did that last year. Uh huh. Well, you, pro- you might know a little bit more about it than what I was able to glean this morning on the. Uh, on the uh, segment, but it was very moving, and you know a lot of these uh, Vietnam vets, you know, met, you know they were not welcomed home no. as as veterans are welcomed today, and so they had a a tough time, and so they took sure. them into Washington, took them to the wall, and it was very moving. Mm-hmm. Uh, many of them never been there, and uh, um, that uh, wall is a very powerful wall, and it was. It was very nice, and I, 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 I um, that group. I don't have the group's name in front of me, but uh, they should. Uh, what a wonderful thing that they're doing! Yes. Well, I know here, here it's called the Honor Flight, and yes. uh, there's an organization that uh, they do fundraisers and everything for it, and uh, they have. Um, I didn't know a whole lot. I knew that they did this. It was originally it was for our World War II vets, um, and now they've extended it to the Vietnam vets. Um, and many of our Vietnam vets, they're getting quite old. <laughs> they're getting older, you know, like me. And they're um, uh, many of them are disabled of some kind, some way. Uh, my brother has uh, has the effects on his body from Agent Orange. He was a Marine. They're in the front lines, you know, spraying the uh, Agent Orange, which is made by Monsanto, <laughs> just so you know that. And um, uh, he got to go, and it was just very moving for him, and it was moving for me. I was in high school when my brother went to Nam, and we wrote. I wrote to him, and uh, uh, I remember those days very vividly. And I remember when he came back, how he was treated. Um, mm-hmm. And I was probably more emotional than he was. You know, my kids came with us. So we we stood there as they brought them back. They are sent out with uh, honor, and they are brought back with honor. And they have uh, volunteer, uh, the, uh, the motorcycle guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, they uh, bring them in. They, uh, they block off part of the highway, Melody. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking I-70, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, from St. Louis to uh, Jeff City, or, well, it's Columbia, Columbia, Missouri, and uh, we're talking 240-some or more motorcycles uh, escorting the buses that had these vets on them, mm-hmm. and it was, and then I'm getting all choked up. It was very emotional to see them actually finally get the honor that they were yes, due. Yes, very much so. And, uh, you know, then when they get them off the bus... They announced each one of them and their rank and where they served. 
And it was very emotional. I thought it was just a wonderful time. And he was very moved by it and excited by it. And uh, he's not in good shape. So they did have him. He doesn't use a wheelchair, but they did have him in a wheelchair. It was, it's a long, long day, all yes. that they do, because they fly in there, and they get met with a, with an honor group there. They get met when they come back. I mean, it's just uh, – and the roaring of those motorcycles whenever they bring those guys back home, it's just I – mean, I can't even – I can't even describe what it's like, but they finally get the honor that they were due. You know, I can't imagine. I think we're probably the only radio program in the country that the has cry. two female hosts <laughs> that are crying. Oh, there they go. Look out. <laughs> you know? Cry and giggle, you know. <laughs> You know, oh, but grief. that's what emotions are. That's what emotions are. <laughs> so we'll make history, Beth. <laughs> Sorry. I do get emotional when it comes to my I brother. Do too. He's, having, well, there's... he's having a hard time right now. He's he's uh he's just not in good shape. So, you know <laughs> I'm having my well... big uh, big uh, meet and greet that's coming up tonight and uh i'm honoring the vets there i'm honoring them and i picked up the cake last night oh my gosh it's just huge and i had them put the uh the um logo the emblem for each one of the branches of the service on it and i just about cried when i saw that <laughs> and he can't come because he's in pretty bad health right at the moment so he won't be able to be there with me but oh, but uh, it's um but, well, it, Let's move on to something a little more. <laughs> Here's some good news. Here's some good news. Here's some good news. We have for the vets. <laughs> I think this is good news. Tomorrow <laughs> is Veterans Day, and there are restaurants who honor the vets by allowing they the restaurants they allow them to uh, have a free meal. Yeah. And I, I, you know what? That is just wonderful. And um, some of the restaurants are Apple is Applebee's, Olive Garden, uh, Chili's, Denny's, Red Lobster. Of course, these are all owned by the same company, TG, TGIF Fridays, Texas Roadhouse, Red Robin. You know, they have burgers and, and brews, uh, the Longhorn Steakhouse, IHOP. And uh, there, I don't know if there's some are for today, some are for tomorrow. So uh, you know, call your local restaurant to see. I think it was IHOP that was actually for today, for the free Veterans Day pancakes. Um, Outback, you can step into any Outback or any of these restaurants tomorrow, and uh, they do have. Uh, well, they don't have a free meal, but they have a free Bloom and Onion. Uh, available for you. So it does vary from restaurants. Um, Carabas, I mean, these are, you know, big chain restaurants. Most of them Mm -hmm. are owned by the same corporation. But still, um, if you have... And if you you can't go to one of these, I'm I'm speaking to those who are not our vets right now, take a veteran. Take them out to lunch. Take them out to dinner. Take them out for breakfast. Do something and show them your appreciation. Uh, let's and, uh, go ahead. And let's not forget the Korean War. There's a, absolutely. There's a, there's a reason they call it the Forgotten War. Mm. And I have I have an, a brother-in-law who actually lost his father in the Korean War. My uncle was in the Korean War, and uh, so and again, it's uh, you don't they don't talk much about you know the very the it's one thing veterans re- and that's what they said on the segment this morning. You, you don't. They don't talk about their experiences, and here it is after all these years. Uh, but uh, the one gentleman said we did speak about the war today. So yeah, um, that with one another they will talk. Yeah, they don't nor- necessarily tell us. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, my brother didn't come home from Vietnam and tell me everything that was going on. <laughs> you know, and uh, the the things that haunt them for the rest of their lives that they did in the battles of war. So. Well, let's change topics, and I right. want to touch on. We're going to be heading into a break shortly, but uh, well, this one's short, Roy- sweet. Oh. oh, go ahead, go ahead. What oh, do you I was going to say, talk? Roy, but we can hold that for the. Yeah, longer. I didn't think that one was short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that one might take us a little while. This, <laughs> this one, it was just when it came across. I thought, really, that's news. Um, 
Pope has banned cigarette sales at the Vatican. It says the, that Pope Francis has outlawed the sale of cigarettes at the Vatican in a bid to lead by example on healthy living. The Holy Father has uh, decided that the Vatican will cease to sell cigarettes. I didn't know even at stores. I guess it is kind of like a little community, isn't it? To employees as uh, 2018, no longer can they sell cigarettes. The reason is very simple. The Holy says... Can, the Holy See cannot contribute to any activity that clearly damages the health of people. Well, you know, that only makes sense because he's, uh, he's bit really big into the climate change and the global warming, and uh, he was upset about the Paris Agreement. So <laughs> it just makes sense. They better stop smoking them cigarettes. But. And well, another short story is, you know, Bergdahl, he's up for yes. hundreds of thousands of dollars in back pay, up yes, to $300,000. He left his post. Why should he get paid for it? You know, I thought they were going to make him pay restitution. <laughs> yes. Not pay him for what he did. Uh, it's wrong. It's just it's absolutely, absolutely wrong. wrong. And it is so, you The know, guy know. pleaded guilty. <laughs> you know, it's not like he was pleaded innocent and, you know, okay, well, he pleaded guilty. He admitted he was guilty. God, it gets amazing. Three hundred thousand dollars, back pay, POW pay, all kinds of various uh, dollars come into play mm. uh, to create that. I mean, uh, it's, it's just, are you? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I uh, think he deserved a lot. Have uh, well, he didn't really get anything. Seriously, he didn't really get anything, and um, and those young men that went out to save him lost their lives. And he got nothing. You know, it's just it just absolutely infuriates me. And here we are on Veterans Day, and we're crying about the ones that have sacrificed so much. Yep. And this guy, he cared nothing about their lives. So, as far as I know, he wasn't kidnapped off the base. Or no, he walked he off walked. the base. He, he walked. walked out. He put others in danger, and then he then he sat here a week or two ago and was saying that the Taliban treated him better than the Bad. United States. And I'm thinking, well, go back. Absolutely. Yes. He probably will. <laughs> no, he won't. Nah, he's him. too much of a coward. They don't like him either. <laughs> they don't like well, him anymore than we do. <laughs> maybe you should go. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe you should go. But anyway, so well, you I know, saw this, that. This week we had this. We had the anniversary of uh, the presidential election, and I've gotten kind of a big kick. I don't know if you've watched any of the news or seen, but they were reminiscing the crybabies that night. Uh. <laughs> and even some of them reminisced and went out and screamed and cried at the sky. <laughs> it's like seriously, people. Seriously. Have you ever been that emotional over an election, any type of an election, local election, president? I don't no. ever remember becoming no. that. No. I think they need a life. I know they need to read the Constitution, yes. but I think they need to read a, need a life. They, I mean, there's something mentally wrong with these people. They're obsessed. <laughs> they are obsessed. Well, and it's like, you know, Donna, Donna Brazil said it was a, the... the the Hillary campaign was a cult. Well, it looks like it was a cult, doesn't it, with the way they're behaving? Oh, absolutely. Well, it's I mean, just they not, just can't a, get past it. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> like, good grief. Oh, we're back. Oh, I think he, there he no, is. I, I thought just, he was typing. Well, yeah, we um, lost connection there for a few moments, but we're heading into I, break. We are heading into a break, but I was going to say, they showed the young girls that were sitting there crying as they're waiting for Hillary to come out and give her speech after uh, uh, after she lost the election. Of course, she didn't come out and do that because she was too drunk. But anyway, we're gonna, we are going into a break. It is open mic Friday because we want to hear what you have to say at 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218 and Melody and Beth Ann. And hopefully, some of you will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. 
global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Yuji. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a re-established Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions, and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more, using Scripture to interpret Scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border. Dot org, C-R-O-S-S, cross the border, dot org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. We have returned. You're listening to Power Talk. I just learned it again. We're listening to Power Talk with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. And it is Friday, and we like to do Open Mic Friday. And uh, so your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. And we have Joe from Arkansas. Joe, we're going to have to put you on staff. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, I was thinking as a third co-host. <laughs> yeah, he could, well, I could use a little extra co-host. money, so if you'd like to hire me for something, I'd, I'd go for it. I'd, I'd accept it. Well, there's no money involved in this. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll pay you triple what I'm getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, well, we can negotiate it. How's that? All right. There um, you go. But uh, what I'd like to talk about is that you were talking about how so many veterans don't like to talk about what they went through. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, I know it, maybe it's partly that they don't like to talk about it and also partly because there's not so many people that want to listen. You know, I find that, you know, if you really want to say something, it's very hard to find somebody that uh, that really wants to listen to what you have to say. But what I'd like to do is um, I think there is nothing more interesting than the history of uh, ordinary people, you know, what kind of regular, not so not so famous people uh, went through and what they experienced and what life was really like for them and so on and what they did. And I think there's nothing more interesting than real life, you know, true, honest to goodness stories of that sort. And so I would like to encourage any veterans listening that would like to write down their stories and make them somehow available to people that would be interested in reading, you know, about their experience. Um, You know, I'd like to encourage them to do that. That's an awesome idea. We should have done that weeks ago. Joe, come on. You're, you're yeah, too you're slow. Slipping. You're slipping. <laughs> we could have put it on websites. 
on all of our websites we could well, have put you know tributes. What? Let me just say something here. That doesn't mean we can't do it for future That's stories. True. And if they'd like to send us, in, if the, those listening would like to share, you can email us your story at powertalks at yahoo.com. That's power talks at yahoo.com or send us uh, a letter P.O. Box 276 Berlin, Maryland 21811 and just address the envelope to Power Talks and we can share the stories. doesn't have to be just Tell the zip code again. 21811 P.O. Box 276 Berlin, Maryland 21811 and when you do that, I'll put it on my blog. Mm-hmm. I, I'll start something with that as well. That would be absolutely wonderful. Um, so send that in to uh, at yahoo.com, powertalks at yahoo.com, or a handwritten. We Make sure we can read it if it's handwritten because we'll have to transcribe it to put it in, or else take a picture or scan it or something to put it on the uh, blog at uh, post office box. 276 Berlin, Maryland. That's MD21811. Mm-hmm. Fantastic, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, yeah. I think it's terrific. You picked up on that like that. And of course, there's always the idea of, uh, always also the idea of uh, doing a book or an ebook or something like that. You know, somebody has a, thinks they have a particular interest. We could make story a, or really likes to write or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, we could that, make a compilation of them. Yes. We could make yeah. a book of, of, of several of them. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, All that right. Would be Here's a project. Yeah, be a great project. Okay. It's a great project, ladies. Yeah, because we have nothing else to do. <laughs> and you know what? We could also, because we have, like, veterans from World War II that are no longer with oh, us, but we have their children. That have the stories. And they have the stories and even pictures. So, really, if we put together a, a you know, some sort of a book or something like that, it, pictures would be fantastic. So, we would accept stories from the uh, uh, children or living spouses or, yes, so. That sounds good. And also, you know, I, I was going to say, you know, my father-in-law was a um, World War II vet. My dad was a World War II vet. My father-in-law actually was shot down over Germany. So, he was a prisoner of war. Um, so they are, there are some stories there, and I know that his, uh, uh, my sister-in-law has, uh, has tried to keep those um, written down. And they have a few pictures, too. So uh, this is awesome. It's yes, awesome I'm excited tribute. about it now. So uh, we'll have to make it a point to remind the listeners. Uh, and for those who aren't listening today, we can uh, make sure that uh, when they listen in the future, on Monday or Tuesday, that uh, they also hear the same story. So, And, you know, we are working in... We haven't started as yet. I'm trying to. <laughs> We're slow. I'm trying to complete my Discount Gold and Silver's website first. We're revamping that. When that's completed, we'll get maybe a one-page website for Power Talks to, you know, where possibly we can have a blog and you know share other things. But uh, um, so lots of things to do for the future. So, but for today, um, what's next? What's next? What's well, next? you know, <laughs> well, you know, we have. Uh, it just seems like every day there's another, another accusation for more sexual assault or abuse, and uh, yesterday it came out against uh, Judge Roy Moore, who's running for Senate, Senate uh, position in Alabama, and of course the newspaper that put it out, or they've already endorsed the other candidate. Um, really don't think journalists should endorse openly. I I think they have to need to have their opinion, but a newspaper to endorse a candidate, that's already seems to me that throws their 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 prejudices. But anyway, uh, he denies the sexual misconduct and it's it's supposed to have happened with a 14 year old about 38 years ago. Um, We wonder why they've got four of them, I think, three or four of them that have come forward. Oh, I only heard later. about the 14-year-old. Yeah, I think they've got several here, that, um, but that's the one that they're concentrating on, I do believe. It says uh, on Thursday that four women said Moore asked them on dates when they were between ages 14 and 18, and he was in his 30s. Mm-hmm. One of them told the newspaper that he forced her into a sexual contact after taking her to his home. The three others said their encounters didn't go that far. 
Um, so they're trying to, uh, and of course they had a long talk about it. And you know the uh, the rhinos are already jumping on board and saying he needs to resign. He needs to step down from running for Senate. I find that extremely interesting. He's uh, guilty without, you know, it, it's, yes. uh, you know, John McCain was ugly about it. And uh, um, so uh, McConnell has come out and said Roy needs to uh, withdraw from the campaign. Of course, you know, Donald, President Donald Trump um he didn't endorse Roy Moore. It was the other guy that he endorsed, and uh, but kinda, he was excited that Roy Moore won. <laughs> kind of makes you no, wonder if they, you know, they didn't know this was kind of lurking in the background and so forth. But I don't could know. you imagine if Trump had endorsed this guy, Roy Moore, Moore and then this came out? Yeah, it would. Be, the, the the media um, would have had a field day with it, but. Um, but whatever happened to being innocent until proven, until proven gu- guilty. guilty, and that's and that's what a lot of them were saying last night. And and the one guy that he does, he's not really a Roy Moore fan. In fact, he's not a Roy Moore fan. Um, I've, I've lost his name. He's on Fox a lot. I really like listening to him. I think he's got really good. At, he's an attorney, and he has a really good aspect on the on the legal side of things. And uh, he was saying that. Uh, it just looks very, very suspicious, the timing. And he says the fact that Judge Roy Moore has been in the limelight for years, years, and they're just now doing it, just now bringing it up. It's not like he hasn't been in the limelight before. And um, uh, he's been in politics. He was governor. Wasn't he governor? Yeah, he was governor. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's so many things that, uh, that just don't smell right with it. You know, I always wonder, 30 years later, why bring it up now? But even, anyway. even when he was just an attorney and, you know, so forth. I mean, you know, well, things have changed a big deal, so much yeah. since 1974 would have been, you know, 40-some years ago. We have a caller, Beth. We have Arthur. Arthur. Yes. Arthur. How are you today, Arthur? Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good morning. We're good. Uh, since you were on the subject about the veterans... Uh, have, are you familiar with the Beyond Treason video that Joyce Riley did? Have you ever seen that? No. Very, very informative video. It's all about how she exposed Donald Rumsfeld and how they did all the experiments on the veterans. And just all the dirty crap they did to him. And, and Joyce Riley was the one that kind of did most of the exposing of it. If, if you get a chance, go watch that video. It's on YouTube. It's called Beyond Treason. It's an awesome video, man. Very informative. Okay. All right. We will. All right. Appreciate it, Arthur. Thank you. Okay. You guys, you ladies have a nice day now. Thank you. Thank you. You do the same. Have a great weekend. Well, anyway, we were talking about Judge Roy Moore, and of course, there's been more from Hollywood that have gotten out and uh, that are being accused of uh, sexual uh, misconduct or rape or assault. Um, We live in a broken world, you know, and there are a lot of predators out there, and we do have to take it seriously, and I think it does need to be looked into, but I don't think we should all of a sudden call, you know, convict uh, Judge Roy Moore and say he's guilty. I think we need to look into it a little bit more as to uh, exactly what happened, but... um, it's, I, mean, um, I agree, but then that has to be extended to everybody else that all of a sudden absolutely. they have all these uh, accusations, although it seems like, uh, uh, I mean, these, you know, it, 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 but they're, they're two different types of people today. Mm. I mean, when you look at, and, and I mean, it's not to excuse if they did this in the past, it's not to excuse that. But here you have a man that seems to be a man of faith and, you know, and, you know, constitutionalist and the Ten Commandments. He fought, you know, and, you know, so he has that kind of uh, history, so to mm-hmm. speak. And then you get these got people from Hollywood where, I mean, the filth that they produce. You're not really um, surprised when they get You're not surprised, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, they're, they're in Hollywood. You know, people want to say what's, you know, and Hollywood walks away scot free most of the time. No one comes down on them and said, you know, with the filth, the smut, the violence 
that you produce just for the almighty dollar, what type of impact do you think you have on the on the minds of a lot of people that are already little distorted in their thinking and so forth? In fact, I even heard, I didn't watch the, the movie, this new movie about the, the king's men, but it was actually mentioned once that I heard that there was a scene in this new movie where a, a, a shooter goes into a church. Hmm. And so the question is, well, you know, did this idea come from something like that? Um, hmm. I remember watching a program, this goes back quite a few years, and there was a scene where at a college, you know, somebody had walked in and started stabbing the, the, the students at this college. A week later, it happened in Pittsburgh at a college. So, and that program was shortly off, you know, Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the impact that it, that, that Hollywood has has uh, and, and and that the the road that they have taken, um, the filth. Um, mm. you know, so and yeah, once in a while they do produce a good movie. I love movies, and, but there are certainly certainly not the movies that they. Pro- I love the old movies and so forth, but uh, um, it's certainly not a a balanced. Um, promotion of you got good movies far fewer good movies than a lot of this other trash they and cable networks the hbo's and and things like that that lewis ck i never heard of that guy before i, I had not either i, I had not know. i didn't know <laughs> yeah i but, didn't have a clue who he was yeah but well you I, know when creepy. i watched Han- yeah they're bad when i watched hannity last night um he had a panel on there and he had um uh, the one guy on there, which I can't remember his name, he had Geraldo on there, and he had a, a woman attorney on there that that's what she does. She handles these uh, lawsuits that come in for big corps, particularly they get sued. And she says, yeah, you know, a lot of them make it up. But she says you have to investigate each one of them. And a lot of them settle, even though they're innocent, yep. just to uh, get rid of the... Just to uh, eliminate the problem. Just get it, you know, out. And um, anyway, so she... Um, it was a really good, interesting conversation. Um, I think it's Jarrett. I think that's his name. I can't remember his name. Anyway, he and Geraldo. Geraldo doesn't like Judge Roy Moore just because. <laughs> he just doesn't like him. And uh, the other guy didn't like him because of some of the stances he took. He said it was unconstitutional and it was you know, against the law, some of the stances he, he took when he denied federal court uh, 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 orders back in the day, you know. So that's what he's coming from. But as far as liking the man, he's okay with the man. He just doesn't care for how he, what his policies were, what he stood for, um, how he handled it. Maybe I should put it that way. So it was an interesting uh, um, panel. I thought that Hannity had on. They weren't all screaming at each other like some of them do. <laughs> they weren't all screaming. They were actually talking through this and and. Uh, uh, he was actually saying that he's suspicious because of the timing and um, because, like I said earlier, that uh, Judge, it's not like Judge Roy Moore hasn't been in the limelight and been in, been in the focus for a long time, for many years. Why all of a sudden would it bother these women to come up now and do this? And, and the woman said, yes, a lot of them, the woman lawyer said that she covers a lot of it. They do get paid. There's many of these women that get paid to lie, get paid to bring their stories out. Um, and I think when you've got three of them all of a sudden coming out like this, it's suspicious. Yeah. To me, it's suspicious. Now, I can understand one, maybe, but three of them at the one time. Them, yeah. yeah. If somebody has gone to them and, and uh, done something. So uh, it's it's um, we're going to have to watch it unfold. And, you know, and I can't believe a mess. I can't believe, and I know this is going to come out wrong. <laughs> so I should have probably just, but I can't believe there is there, there's any woman that perhaps you know, unless you're married at 14, that sometime in their life wasn't in a a situation, perhaps, um, it, it particularly as for, uh, for harassment or. Or yes. assault, either way, yes. You know, mm-hmm. particularly as women have entered the workforce, and we're talking the 70s, 
You know, mm-hmm. this, you know, yes, the women were in the workforce before that, but I mean, with the, you know, you have the hippies, the free love, that, that type of, uh, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, and, you know, and I, I, I just can't, I, I think every woman has been in, a, in a, a situation at one time or another, but does that make, but does she come out and say, and, you know, oh well, you know, it was this guy, and he sexually harassed me, and you know, I I, I don't know. Um, and I guess you have to, you do have to have some discernment of of what is what. Uh, uh, how many times in high school did you, did you get approached by a young man? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't. I don't think that the high school I went to had. I think it happened at every high school where the guys would all of a sudden think it was funny to take a girl and throw her in the men's bathroom, you know, to embarrass her, you know. And, uh, you know, that stuff that goes on, is it right? No, they shouldn't be no, doing it. Right. It was very embarrassing. I was one of them. It was very embarrassing and uh, um, couldn't get myself out of there fast enough. But, uh, you know, I was walking down. I was a cheerleader, and I was walking down the hallway. We had a big tournament going on. And I was walking down the hallway, and a total stranger came up from behind me. I had no clue. Picked me up. Just literally picked me straight up. <laughs> and uh, I didn't even know who he was. So I would assume that was something that should not have happened. <laughs> I was yeah, very there's, yeah, there's... upset with him about that, you know. And it, you know, But uh, I guess they think when you wear 90 pounds, they can come up and do whatever they want. <laughs> But, you know, so, you know, I don't know how much of that is incorporated into a lot of these complaints and and uh, accusations and so forth, you know. But, you know, I guess, uh, but it is interesting and the timing is interesting, too. But you know, they're not they're, taking his name off the ballot. I mean, he's on the ballot, so. I don't think he should just yet. No. Well, they, I they're, they so. won't. I think they that's can't. What they can't. Oh, they can't take. take. That's right. The ballot's already. Okay. Yeah, I got they you can't take him off. But it's interesting that the Rhino establishment, they're very quick to condemn him and tell him to get out, but they still haven't done that to Clinton. Yeah. Yep. Well, it was those right-wingers that, <laughs> conspiracy theories that caused that problem. You know, it's, Per uh, Hillary, per Hillary. What'd she call us? The right-wing? Right-wing conspiracy. Yes. Conspirators. Yeah. I have a, an article here, too, um, Going back to the right wing conspiracies and uh, those that are still angry over Donald Trump being elected president. But you, you, we talked about Tom Steyer and his, his, his willingness to spend $10 million on a campaign ad to impeach Congress, to impe- um, for Congress to impeach President Donald Trump. Um, we saw, I don't think it mounted to anything. Last Saturday was supposed to be all these protests. Yeah. Did you hear much about that? I don't no, they didn't think happen. much happened. Yeah, football um, season started. But their their reasoning for impeachment are so bizarre because there's no reason to impeach him. But they said it should have started at inauguration. Well, what did he do at inauguration that he needed to be impeached? Um, they don't like his policies, therefore he should be impeached. But none of these people... And I know you shouldn't use the term these people, but I don't believe a one of them has ever read or know anything about the Constitution. Now, I don't think Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, does everything right. I don't think any president has done everything right for a very, very long time. And um, uh, you're never going to agree with anybody 100 percent of the time. And I know you have mentioned he's he's done some of the things with executive orders as well. He's mostly undoing executive orders with executive orders. But he's done a lot of good things that he's not getting credit for that people aren't seeing. Congress is obstructing him. Both sides of Congress are obstructing him, thinking it's going to hurt him. And I think it's going to end up hurting them. And it's for certain going to hurt this nation. And so I'm kind of disgusted with the whole lot of them. But these... These haters that want him impeached, they are not going to give up, you know, just, you know, like they're going out on <laughs> on the anniversary of losing and screaming at the sky, you know. It's like they're just, I think they've flipped out. They're nuts. They're nuts. <laughs> we come back just, around. To that. Very simply put, they're crazy. <laughs> well, and they're violent. 
They're violent. They they always talked about President Donald Trump when he was on the campaign that it was his people that were violent. And we know now that some of those protesters were hired by other people, other sources. Well, this attack on on Rand Paul is starting to smell and look more and more like it was an attack of political me of of a political dis- well disagreement. So, because it says here in this particular article that the federal charges are expected for Rand Paul's attacker, the assault may have been politically motivated. They're believing now that it might have been politically motivated. I don't care what motivated him. You don't go running over no, to your attacking, t- and attack your your neighbor and knock him off of the lawnmower. I'm still impressed that he was mowing his own lawn. I really am impressed. <laughs> so, but. Uh, the prosecutors are expected to bring federal charges in the attack indicates that that they may believe it is politically motivated. This is uh, coming from uh, um, uh, Fox News Shepard Smith, which I'm not really a Smith fan. But previous media reports that the uh, attack was over a longstanding dispute or an, are inaccurate, Paul says. But, you know, they he um, he bruised or cracked five ribs and bruised the the lung so the lung keeps filling up you know not filling up but it keeps getting fluid in it you know i mean he he beat him up pretty bad um of course i don't think rand paul's a very big guy and i don't know how big this neighbor was but you know knocking him off of the lawnmower i don't know what kind whether he was sitting down or it was one of those stand-up lawnmowers or what it was but uh uh I don't care what your reason is. You don't go knocking your neighbor around. You just can't no, do that. No, you don't. But usually, I mean, you're just not mowing your lawn, and all of a sudden the guy comes, your neighbor runs over and knocks you off the lawn. That hasn't happened to me. No, I mean, usually <laughs> there's something that leads up to that point. You know, maybe some words were given, maybe a few, you know, who knows. If, well, this guy know. was very vocal on Facebook and other places, very vocal politically. And he is a socialist. He is a Democrat. And he did commit violence. No, <laughs> he did commit violence against a Republican. It was a Democrat that shot the Republicans when they were practicing baseball. I mean, it's they are the true bullies. I hear the music we're going into a break. It is Open Mic Friday. Your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. And Melody and Beth Ann in the morning will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free... 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, 
we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. We have returned. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. Uh, it is Friday. It is Open Mic Friday. We do want to hear what you have to say at 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. What do you got in the news, Melody? Well, you know, uh, President Trump has been doing his Asian tour and um, he made a speech last night. In fact, he's in Vietnam. And he made a speech last night. Uh, he declares a new world trade order. Mm-hmm. And uh, he delivered a, a pretty uh, uh, strong defense of economic nationalism. And he says that America will defend its commercial rights. And we won't enter into multilateral trade agreements that tie our hands. So he was addressing the business leaders in the Asian Pacific Economic Corporation Forum. And uh, he said America has been treated unfairly by the global trading system and by bodies that underpin its rules, such as the World Trade Organization. And he says he's not going to let the U.S. be taken advantage of anymore. And uh, he also, and his speech is sort of common, not common, but it carries a theme through all, I notice that all his speeches that he's given from Ireland to the UN to here we are in Asia to where he says, we're going to take care of our country just as you take care of your country. Absolutely. And that is a theme that he has been carrying in all his uh, major foreign uh, visits and, and speeches. So he said that with, in, and when he was in China also. So um, there was a lot of agreements, um, uh, contracts that were signed when he was in China. Uh, you can read both sides of the of the the comments that a lot of these agreements agreements were already negotiated prior to the trip, and it was just a you know it was just a, a signing um, photo op. Uh, and discussion for, but the uh, fact of the matter is, I guess it totals about $250 billion. I saw today where China is going to um, soften some of its banking regulations, for, you know, although it's not by much, it's only by a couple percentage they would allow to uh, increase uh, uh, foreigners into their banking system, their stock markets, and so forth. I think right now it's at 47 or 49, and he, the, the president of China, she uh, said it would be 51 percent. So not a big percentage, but you know when you're talking about billions and billions of perhaps trillions of dollars, you know a couple percents is quite a bit. Um, so there's different ways of looking at that. I've seen where China, you know, I, I, I get free trade and you know fair trade. You know, we mm-hmm. want to have fair trade. Uh, we are globalized. That's not going to change. No. Uh, the, and, and you know, I don't think it's to the advantage if we just uh, didn't do that. I mean, I really think that, um, you know, economically wise, you know, you want to be able to do uh, to do business with other countries. But you want to do it so that it benefits you as well as them. And that's where the problem has been. It's been more one-sided. And my concerns are... Um, you know, if we bring if we bring back factories to this country, they're just not going to be all U.S. companies. Um, you have China trying to make agreements with Goldman Sachs to where they can bring manufa- their manufacturers into this country, and you know, I, I, I have problems with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have problems with that. Would well, you have problems with us taking factories over there? Oh, well, uh, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course, um, but we've been doing it for a different reason <laughs> than what they would be doing it over here. I, I uh, think so. Ours yeah. is for tax evasion, you know, to to keep from having to uh, 
and, well, and also labor, and also the labor, we, also, we, also the uh, expense of labor. Yeah, uh, I mean, we exported our inflation for a lot of years. All of these people wouldn't have been people, televisions. I mean, people's homes have how many televisions? I mean, growing up as a child, we had one. <laughs> one. We had one telly. And we now watched it like two hours room. a day, you know, maybe. <laughs> maybe two hours, maybe two hours a week. You know, but, and I know uh, people that it never goes off. They never turn it off. And, you know, and off they have the one time. in every room. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't be able to afford those if they, wouldn't have, if they hadn't been made someplace else to where the labor and everything else was so cheap. You know, you, I would like to have one here in the office, but I don't have one yet. So. But I think it would be good to watch the news because sometimes things happen that um, I miss it. You know, somebody might text me or if I happen to see a, a tweet come up on my phone or a message on email, you know, where you get an alert uh, from some of these different news sources. But other than that, I don't know what's going on a lot of times if I don't have those things queued in. Um, but, so, yeah, we got televisions everywhere. <laughs> so we'll have to see if this administration will be able to rewrite the rules of global trade. And uh, we'll see – how it affects and, and how soon uh, we will see the impacts from any of these changes in the, 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 the global trade. And, and I think one of the key things is, the cur- of course, the, the currency manipulation. But, you know, the, the problem with currency manipulation is because other currencies keep their, their currency low, so they have, so it in- helps their trade. Well, our dollar is fairly strong at this point in time, which means we want a lower dollar. And that's all great for gold, you know, because, uh, you know, we want a, our dollar to lose a little bit of its value. Government wants, government wants mm-hmm. inflation. They need inflation. They want a weaker currency. And, uh, but again, where are we able to, and I get that we have, uh, you know, we still do the major cur- uh, trading in, in the dollar. Um, but we're seeing things change. We're seeing that trend change. We're seeing, and does that have, when we change the global trade, how is that going to affect the U.S. dollar? So uh, a lot of things are going to be interesting. They are going to and, be interesting. Um, <clears throat> fingers crossed that it works well. And, and it's nice. for all. We can keep out of war and we can get everybody's economies turned around. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And world <laughs> peace. And world and peace. World peace. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, know, I have been, I have been uh, 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 very impressed and excited about how well he has been received in these countries as he has traveled. Um, China, they rolled out, literally rolled out the red carpet for him. They had not done that for other presidents. Uh, invited him into the Forbidden City. They have not done that for other presidents. So they really did embrace his visit. Um, I don't know if that means anything or not, but it, it, uh, you know, they all embrace the president. He goes abroad and he does this. uh, You know, when he went into the Middle East, he was very well accepted um, and received. And the mainstream media here just hates him so bad. They don't see anything good, not one thing. And yet, this relationship that he seems to be building with these other countries in order to have a coalition that we need for uh, to keep peace <laughs> as well as our economies. Because like you and I have said before, it's not just the U.S. economy that's hurting. So if these guys get their heads together, maybe they can turn things around. Of course, that's a nice flowery thought, you know, on a cold winter day. But um, anyway, that's uh, – I have been – you know, I have been encouraged at least by how he has been received. Well, you can also look at the other thing. You can't forget that China is a communist nation. So yes. to have a communist nation embrace our president, it's kind of like, okay, what do you, what do you, what are you doing? What do you want? Uh, what do you want? <laughs> uh, you know, you're you're just going through the theatrics and and so forth. And as I mentioned yesterday, I think. But they didn't program, do that with the other presidents. Well, you know, I can make arguments, but. I'm looking at this as a positive. I, you know, I'm thinking okay. this as a positive. But then, and I think Trump is doing what I really believe he's doing more than anybody else has done. At least the words are he's there. Trying. He, he's The words are there. I like the words. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what can actually be done when you have a nation that's ba- virtually bankrupt? 
Yes. You don't have a lot of power. No. You don't have a lot of negotiating power. Um, because we're so far in debt, we have a debt that can't be paid. We have people here that are struggling. They want to revamp the tax code. You know what? The tax code, more people, $1,200, that's what they're going to save. Um, for, <laughs> it was 4000 It's this, getting bad. <laughs> this, was another, this was another program where no one was able to look at. No one was able to see what was going on. Uh, here it is. The Senate's got it. They've made changes, and, and they don't like it. And it's just like, well, why can't, even if the Democrats, but why does it all have to be so secretive? Why does it all have to be so? Because the deals they're making are with these corporations yep. and them and their corporations. The D.C. occupiers occupy in offices and cut in deals, and they are in it so deep that they can't get out of it. And that is why they hate Trump. That is why they hate the American people who elected Trump, and they're not going to do anything to help the American people. And I hear music. My yes. Goodness. We're, out of, we're out of day. We're out of the hour. We're out of the week. It is Friday. We wish everyone a happy Veterans Day. Take a vet to lunch. Take a vet to breakfast. Take a vet to dinner. Um, celebrate Veterans Day and tell them thank you. And have a wonderful weekend, Melody. You do the you same. You too. God bless. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built, that's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased. It has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. 
or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.